all four women worked as prostitutes. So these were ladies who had a particular lifestyle. Among the dozens busted in a prostitution sting. 100 people arrested in an undercover prostitution sting. A lifestyle that uh, caused them to want to live below the radar. In one case, deputies arrested a 16-year-old girl. 16-year-old girl arrested a 16-year-old girl who they think may be a victim of sex trafficking. They the Safe Harbor Law states that Minnesota youth, or those under the age of 18, who engage in prostitution are viewed as victims and survivors of sexual violence and not criminals. This law was passed in 2011. In 2011, I was 16 years old. Why is arresting someone who is 16 the solution? How did they even get there? I know someone who has done a lot of research in this area, and maybe they can piece this together for me. Hi, Mom. Hi, Soph. Uh, we're just trying to get some background here, so would you mind giving your name and academic background? I've worked in journalism in back, my background, but I've recently started working with forensic psychology, and um, I've been doing research in forensic psychology, and I've just finished editing a textbook in forensic psychology, and did a lot of work on studying human trafficking in the process. Um, do you have any anic like historical anecdotes that you think will apply to this video? One of the images that came to me while studying human trafficking that seemed so powerful was Rembrandt's painting of Lucretia. And Lucretia was a real person and she lived in the Roman era and she had been raped by a Roman nobleman and she could not go back to her husband or her family. She had two choices. She could either go live with the Roman or she could commit suicide and her choice was suicide. This is, it is the kind of thing that women still face and it's still an issue in human trafficking all over the world. Women are abducted, taken into human trafficking, and um, they have nowhere to go. So even if they escape, there is, there's no hope, and they just get into a cycle and they go back into to prostitution just to live. Okay, so as students, it's very important to get involved and um, understanding how politics works in these situations, so what policies do you know about that are relevant to human trafficking? There are new state laws, some cases, where instead of a trafficking victim having to get together a, um, a lawsuit, it would involve civil court, a lawyer, very expensive stuff, the, uh, the criminal courts are now including um, finding the perpetrator, either the pimp or the, the, the person who's forced them into labor, to pay for lost wages or pay fines to the victim. So the laws are good in two ways. Um, they're keeping the, the traffickers from getting back in business and they're helping the victims return to society in a way that they can hold their head up. So, again, relating to college students, do you mm -hmm. know any organizations that have worked to mitigate um, mm -hmm. human trafficking and sex trafficking that have found advice to college students? There's some, there's some timely things that are associated with this, and one is for college students to realize that some of the one of the biggest organizations, Polaris, that is involved with keeping, um, with, with helping people who are trafficking victims, uh, was started by college students. Um, I think it's Harvard University, and they are still active. And Harvard has taken from the students uh, and created a, um, a trafficking law department, and they teach trafficking law there. This is branched out into, I think, Georgetown. They teach trafficking law, and there's some other places too. And it was driven by the college students. So they should be very proud of being part of this project.